Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus today. I'm Trace. This is episode three of five of our series on psychedelic drugs. If you're just tuning in, this is a five episode series where we take a big topic, we break it down. It's gonna be really awesome. Just a reminder guys, we're talking about pretty heavy stuff, psychedelic drugs today. We're not condoning their use. We're just talking about them scientifically, as rationally as we can. So let's get started. What did the government do with psychedelic drugs? That's a question that a lot of people have, right? The government used psychedelic drugs for research, and it wasn't just our government. When I say the government, I really could mean a lot of them. For example, Joseph Mengel and other Nazi doctors experimented on concentration camp prisoners with mescaline and other psychotropic drugs just to see what happened. In 1953, a pair of Canadian researchers tried to use high doses of LSD to scare alcoholics into sobriety, figuring they had access to their subconscious so they could create a lot of influence over their future behavior. Turned out that it kind of backfired and <laughs> they ended up inducing this mystical, near-religious experience for the alcoholics. And uh, it did convince them to stop drinking though, but it wasn't what the psychiatrists were trying to do. It was instead the alcoholics kind of looking at their own lives while high. <laughs> In the midst of Cold War paranoia, the US Navy thought that mescaline could be used to get people to reveal information against their will. It would be like a, like a truth serum. It didn't turn out to work that way. The CIA went crazy with LSD in the 50s, doing all sorts of different research using this drug. By the way, uh, LSD, it was created in the 1930s, and in the 1940s, Hoffman realized, the guy who created it, uh, went back to the drug to try and learn a little more about it, and while he was researching it, he absorbed a little bit through his skin. So they didn't know it was a psychoactive drug until the 1940s, which during that whole World War II thing that you probably have heard about, there was a lot of research money being poured into ways to help the war effort. And they thought LSD might be one of those. So they tried to use LSD for these things and it turned out that it didn't work very well. However, Project Midnight Climax or MK Ultra spanned eight years. And what happened is they experimented on LSD with unwitting civilians, prisoners, government employees, and even CIA agents. It was terminated in the late 60s and uh, they destroyed most of the program's records in the early 70s. However, in 77, there was a cache of surviving documents that were found and it revealed to the public the existence of MKUltra, this LSD testing on any number of people that didn't know they were being tested on. It's kind of crazy, especially since the full extent of the psychedelic experimentation program remains uncertain because they destroyed so much of the documentation. And there is proof though that at least one person died while on LSD. They jumped out of a window. Mm. So it wasn't necessarily the LSD that killed him, it was just the sudden stop at the end. The CIA thought that LSD could be used as a truth serum or as a route to mind control. So they would dose random Americans at bars and at parks and at parties. And they did this without their consent. And that was all part of MK Ultra. They also showed up in San Francisco and they created brothels where the prostitutes could dose their johns with drugs and they could see what kind of results happened to these men. The CIA agents were there observing what was going on through two-way mirrors. In 1977, because of this cache of documents that was released, a congressional inquiry was held into MKUltra, and they found that they were researching ways to deliver this LSD to people without their knowledge, so maybe using magicians and their sleight of hand technique. And then once they had the LSD in their system and they were open to suggestion, they would give them electroshock therapy if they didn't talk. This is a pretty serious program and kind of scary. So in 1951, People in the United States government got word that the Sandoz labs that created LSD were looking to move a pretty huge shipment of it. And they started thinking, oh, so wait, there's just all this LSD out there? What would happen if someone, you know, bought it? What would happen if an enemy bought it? What would happen if Russia bought it? They worked themselves up into this frenzy, thinking that Russia might use LSD as a chemical weapon and drop it on a US city and everybody would go crazy and they could put it in the water supply and then we'd have a population that wouldn't listen to us anymore. So they swooped in and they bought all of this LSD to make sure that no one else could get it. That's how crazy we were and worried we were about chemicals like this, which set the stage for things like the banning of it a little bit later. 
The thing is, all of this stuff is military research. It all had to be done in secret. It all had to be done without oversight, with no peer review. And this is what happens when science happens in a vacuum or in the dark. So, hopefully and currently, psychedelic drugs are being opened up for use in actual science after a moratorium that's been going for 40 or 50 years. And it's pretty exciting. And for more about that, check out tomorrow's episode of Test Tube Plus. So what do you think? Would the world be a better place if the military was fighting with psychedelic drugs rather than bullets and bombs and stuff? Let me know down in the comments. I'll get down there and talk to you about it too. If you missed our last two episodes on drugs, both the history of drugs and what they're actually doing inside of your body, go and watch those by clicking here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Test Tube Plus. Yeah.